Welcome to another episode of Listen to Us Rant About Movies. I'm Wes Ford. And I'm Zach Harris. We rant about movies and drink while we do it. On this episode, we'll be discussing what we've been watching, including our forced films, followed by an in-depth review of both Dr. Sleep and Knives Out. Tonight, we are drinking two separate uh, separate beers. I have uh, from North Coast Brewing Company, I have a prankster with a Q. It's, uh, instead of a K, it's a Q. Um, and it's a <laughs> Belgian style golden ale. Hell yeah. Yeah. I've got uh, off color brewings very, very far, which is a Belgian ale with uh, white wine yeast. That's very interesting. Never heard yeah, of that. I have not either. And I just realized the alcohol percent on this. I hadn't even looked at it before until Uh-oh. now. 7.6. Okay. Strong Mine's... boy. It is Belgian style, so that makes yeah. sense. Mine's six, I think. I think I looked. Yep, let's, give it a little, uh, let's give it a little sip. Cheers. Let's do it. Cheers, man. Yeah, right. it's good. Yeah, I'm um I'm honestly very into this beer and we'll probably get it a lot. It's extremely good. That's awesome. Glad you found something new, you know? It's always yeah, nice when you, you know? find like a, just a new beer that you're into. Yeah, not that expensive too. It's like okay, I'm in. Okay. Yeah, this wasn't bad either. There it, I got a four pack of these and it was mm. like uh like 9 bucks. Yeah, I think same same for mine. But they're stronger, so it's like okay, that's cool. Yeah. Mine are tall boys, so that that goes nice. as well. Yeah, hell yeah. All right, well, before we get into what we've been watching, we'd like to remind you, this podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash L-T-U-R-A-M. You can choose from 180,000 titles from your iPhone, Android, kindle or mp3 player and if you like what you hear on this episode remember you can find other episodes of our podcast on apple podcasts google podcasts spotify stitcher and youtube what are you looking at in your glass there sorry um i like poured the last little bit out and it was like really cloudy and it looked like like a cloud tank like plume (laughs) when i poured it in i was like i don't know if i like that and then i was like is this expired? <laughs> and then I was like looking at it and I was like, all right. It's probably just shit that, you know. It's, it's yeah, it's probably bottom. like this this settlement stuff. So about a month ago, I we bought a case of beer, me and my friends, and then we drank, each drank a bottle. And it was like, this kind of tastes weird, but whatever. And I looked and there was just like sh- shit in it. And yeah. it was like expired for like six months. Oh, man. And then we took that it sucks. back and got in a big fight with the guy who wouldn't give us a refund. Anyway, long story. <laughs> Well, sometimes there, some beers just like have that stuff, even though they're not, you know. Yeah, it was Oberon, so I'd had I'd had it before. I okay, had it quite Oberon, often. Yeah. So then it was like tasted a little weird, and I was like, whatever. But it was like sometimes there's like like that. It was like a plume. It's like real dusty, and it's just kind of like some sediment sediment stuff. Yeah, this is like kind of like square flakes. Like I would describe them as flakes. Weird. Yeah. No, nah, that's not good. <laughs> not good. Not good at all. All right, well, let's get into what we've been watching. Uh, Zach, what you got, man? Not much, honestly. Um, I have not watched much. I recently watched um, Lost in America. Nice. From, I think, 85. Albert Brooks picked it up at the at the crit sale there. Hell yeah. Um, it's like a comedy about um, this couple who basically decide to like rent an rv and like go across country but it kind of gets stunted 
and it's uh very good it was just really fun enjoyable um i like albert brooks yeah i feel like there's a lot of like really funny lines in it uh some that don't you know go as well but felt like a uh kind of like a generic comedy concept done a little better and like you know executed in a more uh i don't know with more intent i suppose huh i like the poster yeah it's really good it's very funny um like all the performances uh it's just like kind of like an easy fun watch that was good i enjoyed it cool might have to check it out sometime yeah man so for me i watched uh and i know you've been watching this too worth mentioning uh the mandalorian yeah i only saw episode one though i've only seen oh okay well at this point of the recording there have been three episodes Mm -hmm. i won't talk spoilers um but uh i'm digging it i'm digging it i like it um i do i am afraid of the lasting power of it i feel like it's being set up as more of probably a one shot kind of thing although yeah. they already announced a second season so i don't know the the pacing of it is very much like an extended short film that's really what yeah. it is mm-hmm. it's like very much an extended short film like the pacing the, there's not like a lot of plot happening um there's really not a lot of like insight into the characters um it's sort of just like getting from point a to point b and the rough roads uh getting mm-hmm. through that through that you know yeah yeah um it's not necessarily a bad thing, but I don't know. I guess I would like it to be a little deeper, but what can you do? Um, mm-hmm. That being said, cool to have that we have this in existence. Like, we have a Star Wars show. It's like, it's crazy. Yeah, it's uh, definitely crazy. It looks fantastic. Uh, I love, like, the space western aspect to it. You really feel that in this. Um, mm-hmm. um, they're expanding the canon, and it seems to be separate from a lot of the things that we know from the episodes like the skywalkers and all that so yeah i'm into it i'm digging it and i'm i'm excited each week to get the next one you know i'm already ready for episode four so hell yeah yeah i'm liking it yeah yeah, i enjoyed it quite a bit um i think a a couple things that or i think main thing that i like uh, not the main aspect but i think the score is really good yeah that's a good thing to bring up it hits a nice niche that some of the other new Star Wars stuff hasn't hit, where it like it's its own theme, but it's yeah. like it it's the same dynamic as the old concept of the score, but like memorable theme that has a melody, but yeah, is is different, and I I thought it like fit really well, and also the credits are really cool, like it yeah it was it was classier than I thought it was gonna be, I guess yeah totally, I agree. Mm. Yeah um yeah definitely and the uh visual effects are very impressive as well yeah they use some pretty cool uh practical effects which are awesome all about that and it really feels like it's in the star wars world that we kind of grew up with you know that original um original series so verna erzog carl weathers nick nolte Mm mm-hmm Loving like in it. Nick, like in Carl, love yeah. the dog. Yeah, always. Um, so yeah, totally cool, and, and uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, one more thing I wanted to talk, since we're talking Star Wars, is uh, obviously Mandalorian's on Disney Plus, but I feel like no one's talking about something else that's also on Disney Plus. What that? Oh, the 4Ks. All the 4Ks, buddy. The Star yeah. Wars 4Ks. Uh-huh. We got them all. It's like. Okay, we knew that they were kind of uh, working on those for eventual 4K release on yeah. disc, and uh, hey, just get them right on there on on the uh, on the Disney Plus streaming it. I kind of it's pretty good. It's cool. It's like okay, they didn't have to do that. Like it's awesome. I will say though, I just want that disc, baby. I do I too. I want the collection. But because that bit rate ain't you know, it's like my internet's bad. Yeah, but it's 4K still... Netflix looks really good. But yeah. like. It doesn't look quite as good as the UHD, but that's also me being a snob. No, I, 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 I'm right there with you. Um, mm. I'm hoping that once the Rise of Skywalker comes out, they'll probably release like a 4K. Yeah, like on collection. Blu-ray. 
Because I'm assuming that, yeah, it's like, just put one out, make it $200, and I'll buy it. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, yeah, exactly. But I, 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 I'm I hoping that they release it, like, with the final one, you know? So it's, like, all the episodes, 4K. Yeah, totally. That'd be mm-hmm. sweet. Um, anyway, I've, I've watched uh, A New Hope and then Empire Strikes Back this weekend on 4K. Look and And uh, it looks great, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You could t- tell, obviously, with the UHD and that bit rate, a little bit higher would be... Mm-hmm. That real nice quality I'm looking for, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, dude, the original Star Wars, fucking see like the pores on Luke Skywalker's face. It's like yeah, it's pretty nuts, it's insane, and mm-hmm. it, the quality and the skin and their faces, and it almost is a negative for the for a New Hope because you can like see the paint strokes on some of the, like the set, you know, <laughs> like, oh, whoa. it's so like cool and amazing that it's like that crisp, and mm. um. I'm, I'm decided I'm going to watch them all leading up to the new one. So, hell yeah, hey, man. Why not? Check them all out in 4K. All in 4K, baby. Yeah. It's probably do the same. When does yeah, the new man. one come out? Like mid? Mid December? December 20th. December okay. 20th. Late December. Okay. Right before Christmas. Yeah. It's usually right before, but sometimes, you know, you slip it. And it's like the 15th. Did you not get your tickets? Did you get your tickets? No, I haven't gotten tickets. Oh, buddy. It's, 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 a, different, it's a different beast here, though. You know. Yeah, I don't know, man. They're all sold out here, dude. So it's yeah. like, I they sold out. I don't, like, don't want to go opening an night anyway, though. It, That's I'm, fair. I, I'm That's to the fair. point where I'm like too stressed. I'll go at like eight a.m. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I'm no. Just, I I usually prefer like the Saturday morning. Yeah. Um, I'm actually doing Friday night this time just because I'm leaving out of town the next uh-huh. day. Um, but typically I do like the Saturday morning, Sunday morning. That's the way. That's the way to do it. Well, you've been doing Thursday nights too, though, right? For the no, no, I never. No, no, oh, no. Okay. I haven't done for Force for Awakens. One... You didn't do a Thursday? No. Wow, you're nuts, bud. I did a Thursday. What are you doing? I I I, I waited too long. Kind of sold out, and uh, and then but I got a Saturday morning for that one, and I, mm-hmm. and I got great seats for that, so I was super happy. Yeah, currently. Like, yeah. Or what were you saying? There's a six thirty a.m. All right. Just for real quick, let's check this out. You, yeah, you check it out. Sweating a little bit, you know. Yeah, dude. I'm telling you, it's it's been crazy over here. So, so right now, none of the shows at my theater, the theater by my house, are sold out. It looks like. All right, it's loading. Yeah, the, there's been four tickets sold at the. 1045 screening <laughs> it, it, at the oh theater. really yeah like people don't buy advanced tickets i feel like in chicago it's like not a they, thing what they it is a, a absolute necessity here in orlando that's so crazy yeah it's really weird see let's wow they literally go from 6 a.m all the way till 5 30 a.m the next day wow on that saturday that's fucking nuts all right, let's let's check out 7:45. That's a prime one. Just indulge me real quick. I'm curious. Yeah, yeah. All right. Question though. Question because this yeah. might be the difference. Do you guys have assigned seating? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. 7:45 p.m. show. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Seventeen tickets sold. What? It's crazy. You it's can't weird, get a right? seat here. You can't get a seat that first weekend unless you go like really late at night and you can get like a front row seat Mm. somewhere like in the side or something yeah yeah. or really early but like good luck (laughs) over here yeah that's really it's really weird though i actually encountered which i guess we'll get to with knives out i encountered a little bit of the the assigned seating pressure Mm. yeah because i didn't realize i thought it just came out on friday and then someone told me, and I yeah. texted you, and I was like, "Wait, it's like a special thing? I gotta get tickets fucking right now." You know what I mean? I know. Um, I I kind of waited too, and especially as it is here, uh, it was almost sold out mm-hmm. for my for my screening, which kind of makes more sense because it's like a one time thing or a week early, you know. Yeah. But I was able to get decent seats, you know, off to the side a little bit, but. Um. But yeah, so that one sold out pretty fast after i got tickets and i had to sit next to an eight-year-old boy the whole time which was really weird his mom kept why was he there 
Yeah, it kept asking to being like, cover your eyes, cover your eyes. Why and, are you there then? Yeah, just don't ta- <laughs> don't take him. And he was also not to get too into it, wearing a very noisy sweater, and he was leaning forward like this, like with his chin in his hands, like on his knees. Yeah. And um, she rubbed his back, like I would say sixty to seventy five percent of the movie. Oh and it my was god! So loud. It was like, <laughs> Oh, it was like, um, I was like, can I ask this mother to stop rubbing her son's back? And I was like, I don't think I can. <laughs> I, I don't, don't think, think I can. can ask. I don't think I can. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Hey, can you can you please stop rubbing his back? <laughs> Excuse me, um, can you stop rubbing his back, please? <laughs> the kid also the kid also um, looked at me a lot. It just be he'd like sit back and it'd be like and stare at you watching the movie and he'd go. And just like stare at me, like really blank faced. I was like, "Oh my god, dude, you have to stop!" Like, I do not like this at all. Like, stop, please. Well, I hope that didn't ruin your experience of the movie. Oh no, not at all. We'll get into just, that later. It was just funny. Because uh, I, I like walked in. I didn't realize it was no one had bought tickets when I got tickets. There were maybe five seats sold, wow. and that was on like Thursday, and then it was on Saturday. And when I showed up, it was like absolutely sold out. You know what I mean? Slight side tangent. We're getting into this a little bit early. I love the tangents, baby. But hey, we got the rants, you know. Yeah. So, just real quickly, did you get did you get like a little certificate for like a, a gift for being there? No. Like, you didn't get like an early access. No. Thing? My theater sucks, though. Maybe that's why no one bought tickets because it's a piece of shit theater. Really? Yeah, it's not good. There's one theater where the subwoofer's broken. And I always check online when I'm seeing a movie to make sure it's not in that one. Because I've been oh. there too many times. And they just like keep, they haven't fixed it, and it's just I have like not fix it. I I remember noticing oh it my during God. Blade Runner 2049. It's been that long, and they have now fixed it. Wow. And Why are like they still showing theater. movies in there? It's I don't know. It's a joke. But it's also like five minutes away from my house, so it's like well, the, it's the, convenient. The, the convenience is there. Right. Oh my god, dude! But anyway, the certificate. Yeah, it, well, this one was like an exclusive Cinemark, but I was wondering if other theaters did it. But like, you got like a nice, like almost cardboard quality like cutout mm-hmm. that like said you're invited to tonight's event, and it was like a like a party invitation almost, and oh, nice. it had it said knives out on it, and um, it said you know, like look up this website and put in your code for a free uh like gift from from uh mm-hmm. from cinemark so i put it in blah 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 like a lock it, of daniel craig's hair <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> i would love that that'd be great oh no it's like f- food concessions yeah yeah I think yeah that. yeah so like but i didn't check my we, like we didn't check until like we sat down so like yeah we ordered we we ordered like a little pizza we were hungry and then we got drinks and we mm. sat down and I'm like, oh we're gonna try this out and i got a free small drink and i'm like damn it i got a, a drink yeah. but you could save it for later so i saved it for later and then oh, uh nice. emily tried it and she got a free medium popcorn we're like fuck oh, yeah shit. so she went got that and we had a free popcorn with it hell yeah she just gets yeah. a, a pizza. You're like, fuck! It's a pizza exactly and two medium ordered. drinks. <laughs> yeah, it's two medium Ex- drinks. Exactly what you ordered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at least you got the popcorn, so that was cool. No, that's killer. <laughs> that's real good. Uh, all right, well, let's move on. Continuing what we've been watching, Zach, what's next for you? Um, not much because I talked about Ringu last time, right? Yep. Um, you watched the and, second one, didn't Ra- you? Yeah. Did I talk about that last time? You didn't talk about the second one. Okay, Ringu two. Um, you know, pretty good, worth watching. If you watch Ringu one and you're in, worth watching. Okay. Um, really cool set pieces in it. But definitely, like, tangents way off, like, the shit that I was expecting. Really? It's definitely, like, widening a universe, but it's more about, like, 
weird like powers and like telepathy and stuff there's this like small boy who like the girl's obsessed with and like he has these weird powers and it was like ah but where's like the videotape stuff you know yeah like, uh, I like you want more weird, of that like, spooky videotapes but there's totally. a really cool there's a really cool scene where um it's towards the it's not like it at the end or anything but the, where they're like interrogating the girl because in the ring i also watched the ring remake um yeah, but there's like the opening Talk about scene. That too, next. Yeah, there's the opening scene where like the one girl dies and there's the friend, right? Yeah. So the friend comes back and they're like interviewing her being filmed and she like they're realizing that when they like focus people who have seen the tape like focus on things, like the electronics respond weird, kind of like how the tape like doesn't have time code and makes like the VCRs freak out or whatever. And her, like, she, like, can project the tape, like, onto the TV. So, like, huh. it's a camera of her face. She's, like, staring at it. Then all of a sudden, like, the tape comes on. It's like, ooh, this is spooky. Like, <laughs> that that scene was really cool. And there's a cool scene involving a pool at the end. But um, it kind of never went where I was expecting. Not necessarily in a bad way, but it just kind mm. of was, like, a little sloppy. Um, but definitely yeah. worth watching. And then I started watching uh, Ringu Zero, um, which I did not get to finish, but was weird. It's very weird. It was a prequel about her, about the girl in the videotape. Right. Like in an acting class. And I was like, okay, this is not what I was expecting. Oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> it's very weird. And I had really had no idea what was going on. I probably watched like 20, 30 minutes of it. I was uh. just like, I do not understand the trajectory of this series. But I'm, in <laughs> I'm intrigued by it. Like, I'm not right. not enjoying it, but very right, right. strange. Very strange. Hmm. So what, what would you, real quickly, what did you think of rewatching the American? Oh, the remake? Um, yeah. It was interesting, especially watching it in such close succession to the original because I yeah. remember I saw the remake first, obviously, like when it came out. And then yeah. I remember wanting to see the Japanese one in like middle school or high school and just watching it and being like, whatever, like it was fine. Um, yeah. Like not as scary because obviously it's way more like tonal and not like things going, ah! you know, like. <laughs> right, um, yeah. But it's also interesting to see the way that they combined elements from the sequel also. Because there's the whole scene huh. where she goes and interviews the friend from the beginning which is actually they borrow a whole thing where she's walking with the curtain blocking the tv like that's all from this sequel in the japanese oh, cool. one so there was an interesting kind of combination with that where they kind of like pulled elements but also like a bunch of just like really weird shit that they added like about like horses and all this stuff that i did not remember. right yeah <laughs> and it was just like <laughs> oh so there's like this weird horse thing and like also the well is not a thing and like like them like ah like screaming and her i don't know it's a lot different um hmm. but i didn't i i still liked it like it's still good like if that movie had come out on its own i wouldn't dislike it yeah it's gore, gore verbinski like and you can tell like it's very stylistic and like yeah um it pales in comparison to the original ring but hmm. on it on its own like still still pretty solid i enjoyed it yeah i have i have, i've seen the remake more and I, I have seen ringu once but i haven't seen the mm -hmm. sequel or anything else yeah. and i remember liking ringu how but long I remember ago did you also, see it long time ago when i was like, honestly, in high school worth rewatching. it was i is honestly a lot better than i remembered it being it's like very yeah. good i've really liked it a lot yeah nice it's cool. a really cool tone and it's like legitimately really creepy and like uh, i like the ring i think that's yeah. creepy yeah it's a cool story like this yeah. the japanese one's really good i'm in daddy life. i have to watch i have to rewatch it buy that arrow box set dude all three and oh shit there there's also apparently i haven't watched this either but there's a movie called spiral that i guess in japan like i noticed this through like the older stuff that i've watched like they were all about like it's almost like TV mentality for movies. So it's like, like the old like gangster movies. There'd be like a series of eight of them, and it'd come over a, out across like two or three years. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, there are studios that are like banking in on sequels, just like making that shit right away. And I guess 
while they were still making the original ring they made a sequel at the same time and apparently it just is like nothing they they came out and everyone was like what this isn't like the other one because they didn't know what the other one was like yeah so they just Hmm. made a new sequel Interesting. So there's like two Ring Twos. There's Ringu Two in this movie called Spiral. And I haven't watched Spiral, but I'm very curious. Hmm. That's interesting. It's an interesting to look into like a franchise like that. Yeah, and it's like a bonus feature on the Blu-ray, and it's like weird. This bonus, this guy made this movie. He's like, I'm making the sequel to The Ring. <laughs> it's like becomes this like weird like cast aside bonus feature. <laughs> it's a whole movie. It's like really, it's very strange. That's crazy yeah interesting um so something else i've been watching another another tv show for me uh you've been watching uh watchmen uh yes i haven't seen the one that aired yesterday but i've seen the rest of them okay yeah so like i started out thinking i wasn't fully into this show until like Mm -hmm. the last couple episodes i'm like all right i'm in i'm in um the one that you last saw that was a great episode yeah it was solid I liked it. And this new one was pretty good. The one that aired last night was uh, mm. was solid as well. And um, I don't know. I'm into it. I don't know what else to say really other than the score yeah. is amazing. The score is, <laughs> the a, score banger. is, is yeah. a banger. Um, and there's some good acting. And I'm I'm interested to see where it goes. Yeah. I'm not I'm not crazy about uh, Damon Lindelof shows. Uh, like yeah, uh, he's not my favorite guy. He's not like my favorite. Yeah, like I, I, I was a fan of Lost. But... I was a fan of Lost, and I watched the first season of Leftovers and part of the second season. I know everyone loves the second season, but um, I don't know. I just his style of never giving answers is very frustrating. It's frustrating yeah, to of, watch. A lot of like cryptic ambiguity that yes. then is like paid off very scientifically later, and it's like. How could you have not like put you know it's just like, oh, or like, or never paid off? There are things yeah. that are, like are literally never paid off. So mm-hmm. it's like it's frustrating to just kind of write on that, but also I kind of respect if that's just a certain style, you know? Yeah, um, it's like sometimes it's really interesting, and I think there's a lot of really interesting concepts in Watchmen that I I like a lot. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, yeah. So so far, I'm just uh. I'm really interested to see where it goes. I do think that it got better from the first initial episodes um, mm-hmm. in the sense of like I, maybe it was just like so different than what I expected in the beginning. Yeah, it's really um, weird, but like weird. It's weird. Me. I'd rather yeah, yeah. It be, I'd rather it be weird than just like a stupid sequel that's just like ripping off the other totally. one. It's like trying totally. to do it again, basically. It's like the, you know, the commenting on the superhero genre and the political climate. It's like a new right. version of that like concept. Which I think makes sense for it to bar like have be Watchmen, but I yeah. think my biggest issue when I was starting it was like, why does this have to be a Watchmen show? This is just like all your own ideas. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like the best parts of this show, like Regina King's character, and like right. I really like the anonymous cop idea, and like the locked weapons, and like the police and you know yeah. what i mean like that whole dynamic those are really all cool. new ideas like, yeah they're, all the best parts are new so why is this watchman and i think it's like every time it's like inching closer to like justifying that but it's still kind of like an annoying thing to like have to justify that for me i get that that's a, that's that's a good uh comment um but i do think that it's starting to if you are a fan of Watchmen or know of the Watchmen yeah. comic, there are things that are slowly starting to be revealed, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, so they are tying that in, but also, you're right. Like, I don't know. It's an interesting thing. It's it's hard to give a full judgment on it just yet. You know? Yeah, have exactly. Because it wait could just to... finish incredibly strong. And like, yeah. Because I think the part the parts that are really getting me invested in the fact that it is, is they're like, there the soup the whole concept of the superhero which is like question it's i mean it's a bit huge part of watchmen is just like questioning the superhero yeah and then like that's coming in in an interesting modern way about like this tv show and then like the show that they're watching like aping like the style of the Zack snyder watchmen movie and it's like okay like now i'm seeing this kind of like weird like once they got everything set up it seemed like now they're kind of getting into the groove 
and mm-hmm. I'm liking it, you know? Yeah, totally. I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, and I love this all is the some, acting. This is just really interesting concepts, too, just yeah. that they're kind of throwing out there. I don't know. It's worth exploring, so. Absolutely. I'm in for now, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely watch all of it. Yeah. I'm going to finish the season for sure. There's an annoying... Th- this is also a little bit PV to me, though. It's like this thing's got to have a second season, right? Yeah. I think that's the plan. And, I mean, Well, and he's like, uh, I don't know. I just made it as like a one-off thing. Like, if someone else wants to do one, that'd be cool. But like, that's Really? He said me. that? Yeah. And it's just like, well, I don't know, though, because it seems like every episode you're like spending the majority of the episode focusing on one character so what it just focuses on all the characters and then just ends you know what i mean right it's just kind of like uh like i don't buy that for a fucking second dude you're definitely doing another season of this show like what the fuck are you talking about yeah that's weird so that's always that's always a bit of an annoying thing for me like people claiming yeah. that it's it's one thing and then it ends and then it's like not that you know it's like well yeah sold it as this but once again something i can't really judge yet because i haven't yeah seen exactly yet. um i got two more things um i got a very brief thing so let me do one more and then you do your thing and then i'll do the last one um i i watched the nightingale oh yeah nice How heard of this yeah it's on hulu right uh i actually rented it on prime oh i think it's on hulu for yeah. free but i don't have hulu so uh, fair enough don't you get it free with disney plus Isn't that the thing? no it, it's a special package you can get it oh okay um but i bought i bought disney plus for three years at 40 yeah. percent off so oh yeah got the you're the deal boy um i got that deal so anyway nightingale i was really looking forward to this movie and i was a little disappointed in it Ah, bummer yeah i it seemed like it didn't really like make like it just i i didn't even know it came out i thought it hadn't come out yet it had a lot of like decent i had like a lot of good reviews in the festival circuit and stuff but it didn't Mm -hmm. i guess looking back it sort of didn't catch on like yeah as much as it could have um i really like her first feature um baba duke i was a yeah. big fan of that i really liked it and yeah, i guess i was expecting i guess i because for one i didn't look too much into it i didn't know what it was about so i kind of went in like open-minded yeah. and because it's like not it, a horror movie right it's not a horror movie yeah i kind of thought it would have elements of it Mm-hmm. Um, just based on the poster and I don't know Nightingale. It's a scene. It looked spooky, like the marketing and stuff. Yeah, and, this, and the marketing. Not a horror movie. Not spooky yeah. at all. Um, it's more of just like a drama of this woman who experiences something traumatic, and she's basically out for revenge. Mm-hmm. But it, it's never satisfying. Um, it just it it continuously is traumatic in a sense where it's being traumatic for the sense of being traumatic. There's no value in being gained from some of the things that happen. Like, I don't want to spoil stuff, but mm-hmm. like there are terrible things that happen and all it did was just like piss me off. And then it didn't seem like she ever repaid that. She never, um, like I never got satisfaction of like getting that revenge from her. Mm-hmm. And it starts to go and focus on another character in a way. And and narratively, it kind of makes sense that he ultimately, well, I don't want to spoil, but um, it just doesn't, it doesn't go where you kind of want it to go as a viewer. And that's not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, but it doesn't work in the sense of like, I'm watching this to be entertained. You know, like I'm watching a film to be entertained Mm. and, uh, it's just just not a fun watch or not an easy watch and not entertaining in any sense of the way of the word it's just um kind of hard to get through and there's no satisfaction to come from that so i don't know take what you will yeah. for, with that but uh i do think there is there's some great acting in there 
there's some good there's some good cinematography but it's way too it feels way too long even though it's like two hours 16 minutes it's uh it feels longer than that it feels like almost three hours it go it just goes and goes and goes and um yeah, I don't know. It just there's some things that just like kind of pissed me off watching it, you know. Fair enough. So um, yeah, I was just ultimately set, uh, unsatisfied. It's not a bad movie in any way. It's well made. It just structurally, I don't think that it pays itself off, and I don't think it's satisfying at all. Mm-hmm. So fair enough. I was disappointed for sure. So that's the Nightingale. Nice. Yeah. Well, the only other thing I watched really was I watched the American version of Godzilla. Crack, nice. Cracked open that Criterion set. You got it. it? Like, yeah, I did. Oh my god, um, dude! And I was, I was like about to throw on the first one, and I was like, well, I've seen this like a shitload of times. I might as well watch. I never really watched the American version. I was yeah. Like, yeah. I'll check out a different cut, but I didn't really realize how drastic of a different cut. It's not even like a different cut. It's like a different movie. Like there's really, there's like all these like additional filmed scenes of like, like a white reporter that's like, you know, marginally or not reporter. I don't know. It's like added on all these scenes of like American actors and then like appropriated all the original footage to like remake a story that like made sense because no one wants to read subtitles. So it's oh. kind of it's kind of lame. Um, that is sounds lame, yeah. Interesting watch, but um, yeah, I would say if you're not curious, definitely not the version to watch. <laughs> right. Don't yeah. start with that one. No. Yeah. Um. But yeah. I it's just like I don't know. I love the original Godzilla, but I think I watched I watched it like less than a year ago. It's like, eh, I'm fresh on it. Like I don't need to, you know. Yeah. Watch it again. But also it's like what am I going to do? Skip to the second Godzilla in this box? No way. Yeah, gotta, yeah, you no. Work you work your way yeah. through. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You got the box. You got to work your way You got to you know, what you got to do is you got to start strong and then <laughs> fizzle out over months and not watch the last four. Like I Yeah, did yeah. Last thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just give like up Zatoichi. On it. Like I think I've I've like restarted the Zatoichi series so many times, and I've gotten so far, but there's <laughs> I like haven't seen like the last like five. It's just like God damn it! Like I just need to like but just then pick it's it long up enough. Yeah, I need to just pick it up. Don't start over again. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's funny. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, the last one I'm gonna talk about is Jojo Rabbit. Oh yeah. Now, I know you were in the festival. You saw a part of it. Mm. You was late at night. You were starving. You hadn't eaten. Yeah. And it was a matter of continuing to watch this movie or to finish, or to leave. And you don't feel like going back to like pay for it and watch the first forty minutes again. Yeah. But when it comes out in a way that you can see it, that's cheap mm. or easy for you, you should rewatch it because yeah, I will. I really liked it. Mm-hmm. I really liked it. And it was it was a lot better than I thought it would be. Um it takes a really it, it takes a very serious issue and adds humor to that in a way that I feel like if anyone else made it, it would just be in poor taste. It probably would never have been produced. Mm-hmm. But the script where it goes is so heartwarming and sweet and it kind of gives you a lesson and it's never on the side of Nazis, obviously. Oh well, yeah. Totally. But it goes in a way where you learn a lot of, there's like a lot of life lesson things in there. And there's a lot of like heartwarming things that I almost got some Wes Anderson vibes in there. Definitely got some from what I saw. Yeah. And, uh, and it's just really funny. I, I really, I just laughed a lot. Mm. Uh, and I think Taika, I just like his style, like his films. I think he's got like a certain humor that I just really enjoy. So um, I would recommend for anyone to watch uh, Jojo Rabbit. Very entertaining film. Check it out. Oh, yeah. And you got to rewatch it again. I, I really recommend it. Yeah, I'm definitely planning on watching it when it 
comes out, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Where did you leave off? Like, do you remember the part? It was like, I mean, it was definitely after, I guess, spoiler alert. Spoiler. Definitely Skip ahead. after he found the girl in the wall. Okay. So it was post that, but I don't know how far, because I don't really remember the exact scene that we left on. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Mm-hmm. I would like- say definitely... It, like, gets really good after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. So, anyway. That's going to conclude what we've been watching for that segment. We're going to move on to our forced films. So, for each other, we chose a certain film that we forced each other to watch. That's what this segment's all about. And for Zach, I chose Ron Howard's Cocoon. Oh, yeah. Which is shocking he's never seen to me. <laughs> um, and Zach chose for me Air Doll. Um, and I don't remember the director's name, but it's the same guy who made... Yeah, Shoplifters. And Shoplifters. Storm, Hirokazu right. Koreeda. Yes, mm-hmm. that's it. Um, Zach, want to kick it off? Sure. Uh, Cocoon's a banger, dude. I liked it. <laughs> I really enjoyed Cocoon. It was really good. Did you like it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was great. Yeah. I'm glad you liked it. It's just like really fun and sweet. It's like, all right, cool. I'm in on this. Like if, like if it got scary, it would have been worse. Like I liked that it was just like really like total like, like yeah. cute old people movie with aliens in it. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah I totally. Think there, was, there was definitely a point where I was like, this movie is good. And it was um, <laughs> after they had been swimming in the pool for a bit and like they feel yeah. good and they're yeah. dancing at the club and the guy's like, look at these old geezers, some like, you know, young kid. And then he yeah. like struts out on the floor and everyone parts into a circle. And I was like, is he about to fucking break dance? And he does. <laughs> I was like, this movie is good. <laughs> like, hell yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> yes and then the like the effects at the end with like the cloud tank and the ship lifting it's like oh this all looks really cool and like yeah i like dude. the effect of the aliens and everyone pulling off their skin and it's weird that steve gutenberg is like really into the alien skin and it's right weird. <laughs> i'm glad you got he... to watch it man yeah do you think steve gutenberg went back and kept the skin that was in that box it's or, been no, she so was long wearing... she was honestly. wearing it yeah I just remember them all throwing their skin in a box, and I was like, "Do you think Steve oh, yeah. Gutenberg, he's he's going back? Check that out." But anyway, um, interesting. Yeah, it's just uh, it was funny. Wilford Brimley is a hysterical protagonist <laughs> for a movie, and I'm all about it. To be like, "Son, we're going to outer space," just like being a big goofball, and yeah. let's talk about a little bit how difficult it was for you to view this movie. Okay, yeah, so. Get West gives me cocoon. I'm like, all right, hell yeah, I haven't seen it. Look it up. Not available on Prime. And I was like, okay, Hulu. Odd, not available but okay. on Hulu. Not available on Netflix. Not available on any streaming service. And I was YouTube. Like, okay. Not on Very YouTube. Very weird. Yeah. No, like, cocoon. Actually, I found one cocoon full movie uploaded, but it was uh. um, a quarter. It was like a quarter in the screen. And then there was like a, oh. gif, a gif of like like stars on the outside. Oh that god! It was maybe two seconds long and kept repeating. And I was like, "This is not gonna work." No, um, this is not ideal. <laughs> so then I was like, "Okay, not streaming. Let's check it out. Blu-ray.com. Boom. Blu-ray. Only available in the UK. Not gonna arrive in time. Wow, that's fucking weird. All right, DVD. Man. What are you gonna do? DVD. Boom. Out of print. Not available." And I was like, okay, who's this is bar- Cocoon we're who's talking about here? Barry and Cocoon. Like, what is going on here? <laughs> I, this is I know. bogus. <laughs> so I eventually, there's a record store in Chicago that has all their stock online. They have a lot of movies. And I was like, I wonder if they have it there. And they did. So went and bought the DVD for five bucks. Had to fucking watch a standard deaf DVD. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was uh, Wait, very. You watched it. You watched it. I did. It very surprised at how difficult it was to find cocoon and it's like yeah, is that because it's like 
it's like being prepped for something or is that just like how it's been you know what i mean i, th- I, don't I just know. don't think it's ever been transferred or well there's the U- uk blu-ray that's interesting i didn't know that existed until you said that yeah um because they had it on amazon us i feel like uk different. makes more blu-rays than the us has why is there always more movies in the uk like for um, I think I think maybe the rights. It's like the studios automatically mm. have like say in the U.S., but, but because the U.K. True. is like a foreign thing, they can sell their rights off and makes you know sense. I mean? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because it's like it's cheap. It's like six euro or six pound or whatever um, for the Blu-ray. Hmm. But it's real weird. And honestly. Well, Next time I order from Amazon UK, probably you'll buy it. It's a good movie. <laughs> Dude, I'm glad you got like, you have the DVD now. <laughs> you yeah, have Cocoon on DVD. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Glad I, you liked it, man. I it haven't seen it since I was younger. It, I kind of yeah. saw it a few times when I was a kid, kind of grew up with it. My parents loved uh, it. We had it on VHS, and then I don't think we have that anymore. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, just one of those movies, man. It's well, a really Howard. fun movie, yeah. <laughs> Definitely cornball, but like, yeah, you know, it's fun. And I was yeah. curious. I looked it up today. I was curious about the 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 timeline of like Cocoon versus Twilight Zone the movie, mm. which it was two years post Twilight Zone the movie, so it's a little Ron. Oh, interesting. Catch, catching up to old Steve. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Just like <laughs> right, right there behind him. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> feel like it, it was like also feeding on to the like the et vibes oh yeah absolutely you know it's like hot times for the like friendly alien movie totally totally mm. that's cool man so what, what do you yeah. rate it um I'm, i'll give it a four all right yeah hell yeah yeah, yeah it's good i'm in <laughs> i'm glad you liked it <laughs> <clears throat> so for me i watched air doll um i liked it dude i like this movie it's good right it's good i do it's really weird i think my biggest i guess i always start off with the negative but um the editing's strange (coughs) the editing's really strange and Mm. it, it constantly goes to different scenes that don't have to they don't flow like as like how it should like it kind of cuts to random things or cuts away from things and mm-hmm. goes to another scene that has no tie yes. narratively to what's happening. Like it just sort of like, for instance, that one point where she like, she's exper- like, she experiences like a bad day and uh-huh. um, she goes into the shower to clean herself. And then it cuts to her being like in the closet. It's like, how did she get there? Or mm-hmm. like, there's some moments with like the closet and then she would cut outside to where she's like, it just, it was all over the place. Yeah. It's like weird fragmenting of like, it's fragmented of time. Also, I guess for those people who don't know that are listening, it's about a sex blow up doll. Yeah. But comes to life. <laughs> yeah. Just to give some context, it's about, yeah. A life size blow up doll develops a soul and falls in love with a video store clerk. Yeah. Um, aside from the weird, editing and some some things with that um i enjoyed it and it had like this it had like that same nostalgic not nostalgic um kind of that just like that sad feeling Mm -hmm. that i feel like a lot of the early 2000 movies had yeah like it kind of nails like this certain um air about it that just like fits those indies movies for some reason and i don't know i I don't know how to describe it into words but yeah um i liked that about it and had like this kind of just like this very sad quality to it um but it was also peaceful and kind of beautiful and um you know it's about a sex doll that's that becomes the life which is such a silly concept but it it has like a lesson to it and Mm -hmm. um sort of it it uses it as an excuse to kind of reflect on modern day society you know like yeah 
it's this like a person, weird, yeah, this person weird comes to life to like, have that story happen, you know? Right, right. And it's um, definitely also not like if you heard that pitch, not at all like the movie that you think that it would be. Totally, also, I feel like it's a yeah, lot, it's not. It's a lot more like serious and reflective. Exactly, it could be some like weird zany like comedy or something you know what i mean but totally totally if it was made in america it'd be some stupid ass fucking comedy yeah but um no it's like yeah totally very reflective definitely has this innocence to it Mm -hmm. and uh one of the moments that kind of like stuck out to me was when i guess slight spoiler alert but it's not that big of a deal is she goes back to uh the maker of the sex dolls yeah and like meets him and uh she sort of like is realizing reality and all these things about life and how kind of like depressing things are in humanity and he goes well i hope that you did you find any any beauty at all in this world did you find anything beautiful and she like nods it's like i don't know something about that was really really seemed to hit home because it was sort Mm. of just like yeah this world how it's reflected is there is so much wrong with our society but if you just kind of put that all aside just look beyond that just look at the sky for instance and flowers and stuff there's there's beauty to be had and um i don't know i found it just a very nice reflective kind of uh film that yeah. I, I enjoyed yeah it's kind of weird meandering and i think it's like it's a weird one for him because he's very rarely like doing kind of like fantastical stuff yeah it's usually like very like relationship based like dramas very um, realistic like yeah like down to earth kind of realism and usually really positive so like yeah kind of, like a weird like kind of like lonely sex doll angle is kind of not but i think it also this movie's though, a downer this movie yeah. it's it's sad yeah yeah and, but i think it does kind of nestle in, in a way of like the doll coming to life and that kind of like discovery because i think he works really well with kids i feel like some mm. of the stuff that that director's done with like children is like some yeah. of the best, best like child acting i've seen so and i think that's yeah, also dude. like thematically through a lot of his movies that's there so that kind of like yeah. like perspective so i think it makes sense in that regard and um yeah, I like it a lot. I love the scenes of the guy cleaning out the uh, vagina in the sink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very like matter of fact and depressing and like Yeah. The word I was trying to think of was melancholy. It's a yeah, very melancholy sure. movie. Mm-hmm. Um I also found it like strange too that I thought she would kind of reveal herself to him like her owner sooner. Uh but I guess it kind of was cool that she sort of like she wasn't into him. Like she, she was just a prop to him, but she yeah. chose to f- find her own kind of life mm-hmm. and then fell in love with this other guy. Um, which by the way, everything at the, the video store was cool, you know, as movie people, like, yeah, yeah. It's like, Oh, I kind of geeked out on that. You know, like mm-hmm. it was, it was cool to like, see her learn about movies and, and just, I miss video stores. <laughs> yeah, totally, you know? man. They I fucking miss video stores. <sighs> they don't have... There aren't any around here anymore. It sucks. Yeah? But Not even, like, some, like, independent ones or something? Not really, man. There's one There's a couple. There's, there's like... A, there's a couple that are tiny, but they don't even do that much video stuff anymore. It's... Mm-hmm. Like, there's Austin's Coffee and Film. Oh, like yeah, a, I remember that. You've been there. And yeah, yeah. I mean, all the movie stops closed, and that was, like, my jam for a while. Mm-hmm. But not even, like, independent stuff anymore. It's You'll find a section in Barnes & Noble. We don't have, yeah. like, a lot of that stuff. It's just big chains over here, and that's yeah, kind of sad. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Otherwise, I, I just, like, the big thing for me was, like, the editing and just some of the plot didn't fully make sense of how it like unfolded Mm -hmm. uh it was i felt like a little too much of a new filmmaker kind of thing but that being said like he has such like 
this really nice style to him that like it felt even like all those differences from his other films that I've seen, which like you said, are more positive, more down to earth, things like that. Um, he has like this, this quality to them that like, I just, I'm drawn to, I love it. Yeah. This it's just like realist wholesomeness. Yeah. That like, even if things suck, like it's okay. Which totally. is very rare to find. Yeah. Cause it's so earnest feeling, you know what I yeah. mean? Like he has a really cool style. He does, man. And just like, I don't even know how to describe how he does it, but it's just like the simple things, how scenes play out, the music, the score is part of it. Mm-hmm. The, some of the shots of just like simple things like, um, wind chimes, you know, it's just like yeah, shots yeah. of wind chimes. It's like, it's, it's sad yet. It's just like kind of beautiful at the same time and feels like home and feels like you're going to be okay. But it's also like, okay to feel sad. And like, Ah, I I really dig this guy a lot. So yeah, man. Um, I gotta give him props. Got I gotta watch more of his stuff. But uh, yeah, Air Doll, man. I uh, I would rate it four, four stars. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Definitely worth checking out. Yeah, for sure. It needs a proper release. It does. There's, there's a Japanese Blu-ray, and I think that's it. That's in print. It's bogus. Man, I could see this on Crit. I know, right? Like, where's the Coretta box set criterion? Come on. Dude, I know. There's a couple UK ones, but Airdoll isn't in them. It's like, where is the Airdoll, bud? There's, there's a lot of films he, he's made that I need to see. Like, I've, I know you guys like Our Little Sister. Like you so and Sean. Is, yeah. I, know just, that, I gotta I watch the, that one. The ultimate nice one. That is like, that is nice core. Like it is uh, so nice core. delightful. <laughs> I love it. it is delightful. <laughs> like, it's so so, so nice. I, it's like just a very nice movie where very little shop- bad things happen. Love Shoplifters. After yeah. the Storm was so good, so good. Um, but this one he's coming out with one called The Truth. Yeah, I saw it. You did? Yeah, I think I talked about it on the cast. I forgot. Yeah. Did you like I, it? I saw it at the film festival. Yeah, it was great. Very good. It's, it's a thing first, where... Is yeah, it his first, first English? Well, English most, oh, it's a lot of French, but it's his first, okay. like, uh, you know... Not I, native pretty tongue. much, Pretty much English language, yeah. It's like French, French, English. Yeah, it's got that, production. that French actress. Yeah, Catherine Deneuve. Which uh, it's... Juliet, um, Juliette Binoche. That's what I'm thinking yeah. of. Oh, okay, yeah, Catherine Deneuve is the, like, older... She's oh, like, yeah, this... From, um, sorry, like, the Boonwell movies and stuff. She's the, yeah. like, older actress. She plays an yeah. actress in the movie, which is why. I forgot this was the one with Ethan Hawke. Yeah, yeah. Nice. It's, it's definitely really good and, like, extremely well done for what it is, but I don't think I responded like as ranks. much to the, just the mate- material that it was covering. It's, like aging um actress like in a new film that like mimics her life which is like good and i'm not saying it was like bad in any way it's just like sure. more more of treaded ground and i not to say that they didn't bring anything new to the table which i think it definitely did but it was just it's just like inherently less interesting than like a family of shoplifters you know yeah I mean? yeah 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 i get you or like get a you. blow doll that comes to life but like our little sister is doesn't have like a crazy concept or and a lot of his other movies are more just kind of like straightforward dramas and they're very good um and i thought the truth was very good so worth checking i out. love his style man i gotta watch yeah. more of his stuff i still haven't seen all of them either i need to see some of his earlier shit did you see uh the third murder i did yeah it's good not did quite as good like of, like yeah. father like son like Father Like Son, very good. Okay, you've seen a good amount then. You've yeah, seen a lot I of newer stuff. I still haven't seen Still Walking. I haven't seen Distance or Afterlife. You've seen all the other ones? Mm-hmm. There's documentaries too? Um, Actually, not all the docs. Some of them, though. A lot of them are on YouTube. I downloaded I haven't seen this TV series either. Nice. Um, But I saw the Calf documentary. And uh, I think Without Memory I watched a while ago. Just whatever I could find on YouTube. They were all on there for a bit. 
Well, you know, one other thing I remember about Air Doll that I want to talk about was uh, we didn't mention at all was just the imaginative use of the doll like blowing air out and her oh, being yeah. there and like she literally looked like the fucking doll like yeah, there was a couple times amazing. i couldn't tell the difference like uh-huh and she like the doll came to life dude it's and she looks doll like and yeah her performance is great and she's also the best duna bay love duna yeah bay. i've seen her before um, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know her name, but she She's was, in, um, like the host and sympathy for Mr. Vengeance and Sensei and Cloud Atlas. Cloud Atlas. Yep. Yeah. She was great. She was great yeah, in it. She, she did a really good performance. Yeah. I think she's um, also in, um, Barking Dogs Never Bite, which I still need to watch. There's a lot of shots of her breasts in this yep. film. Yes, there are. <laughs> there's, there's that. It's confirmed. Uh, <laughs> confirmed but uh yeah she did a great job all right let's move on shall we let's do it let's go we're going to talk uh non-spoilers for dr sleep starting right now when i was a kid there was a place a dark place they closed it down and let it rot. But the things that lived there. Hello, Daddy. They come back. Not many ride the bus this far north. You're running away from something. from myself, I guess. Hi. You can hear me. You're magic. Like me. I don't know about magic. I always called it The Shining. All right, so that was from the trailer of Dr. Sleep. A description from IMDb reads, Years following the events of The Shining, a now adult Dan Torrance... Mus, uh, Dan Torres, I don't know, I can't speak. Dan Torrance. Torrance must protect a young girl with similar powers from a cult known as the True Knot, who prey on children with powers to remain immortal. This is directed by Mike Flanagan, based on the uh, the book and the yeah the novel by Stephen King, following um, the the novel of The Shining by Stephen King. Starring Ewan McGregor, Rebecca Ferguson. Those are the big ones. Yep. Uh, so we we did push this review back because we wanted to squeeze in our next review, which is Knives Out, uh, before Thanksgiving. But uh, so our our review might be a little light. But a little Zach, hazy on her. A little hazy on her. Yeah. Well, uh, things might pop up as we talk about it. Yeah, but for sure. Um, what you remember, kind of right now what what is the non-spoiler what's your opinion of the film um i thought it was good i liked it um you mcgregor was good i think i didn't think it all really like came together in a satisfying way for me but i hmm. think conceptually i like the way that it went and um <clears throat> I also think that they kind of go out of their way, not necessarily that, that that that's a bad thing, but to kind of let you know, like, all bets are off, which is an interesting mm. thing. I feel like yeah. they, come, they come out of the gate pretty bold with some, like, choices in the story that I was not expecting. Um, so I think that makes for a good environment when you're watching something like this, you know, because yeah. it's like... I don't know. It's ma- it gives you the feeling that anything could happen. I don't know if they really followed up on that, but I think that's also, you know, that has its value. Um, hmm. But yeah, I thought it was good. Didn't love it. Yeah. Liked it. I I, I liked the movie uh, a decent amount. Um, I So I guess we should have started with this kind of our background with this, this property. Um, 
so I have never read the book The Shining, but I did listen to the audiobooks of of Doctor Sleep, and I'm a huge fan of the Stanley Kubrick Shining film, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, have you read any of the books or? No, I've no. seen the seen the Shining movie. That's about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Doctor Sleep, this film had a very difficult thing to do, which was it had to follow up the novel the shining which is very different than the film the shining but it also tied in the film mm. it also had to uh <laughs> be the film version of the doctor sleep novel which yeah. follows the novel of the shining yeah so there's a lot of confusing things in there and um like the shining the book ends very differently than the movie but it also tries to pay homage to all of those things. Mm -hmm. And so as someone who read the Dr. Sleep novel, the ending's very different Yeah. because what happens in the shining book is the hotel gets burned down. Yeah. Um, But obviously in the film, the shining that doesn't happen. So they go back to the hotel in this movie version of Dr. Sleep. So kind of confusing, but I think that it did a good job of, paying respects to all of those properties yeah that seems like a very difficult thing to do and i feel like it did a fairly decent job of paying attention to all those things and paying it forward to hit all the fans Mm -hmm. of of the of the whole material um i even i enjoyed going back to the hotel and um but i don't think like feels as fa- as satisfying as like you said because well that just doesn't happen in the book you know like so yeah. it almost feels like a forced fandom thing definitely does to me and i kind of liked it as of someone i mean shining the shining is one of my favorite movies ever mm-hmm. and i know it's not perfect whatever i just i've always loved that movie it's a great movie um but even with this i was sort of like underwhelmed i guess I was sort of just like, ah. Yeah, I wasn't don't... Like, I wasn't, like, fully satisfied with them being back there. I, I don't, don't know. I think you're, the way to put your best foot forward is to hearken back to the thing that you liked. It's like, The Shining is regarded as one of the best horror films ever made. So yeah. if you're making this follow-up that involves it, don't... Like, why are you doing the same setups as The Shining? Because they're just going to be not as good as The Shining. You know what I mean? So I think for me... Actually, I think... Harkening back to earlier, I think I feel pretty similar um, as I do about Watchmen. Because it's kind of like... And I know the book is is a different vibe than the movie because this does have source material. But they they kind of take it in, in their own and I guess... Watchmen, I think, did a good job at, like, continuing. It's not necessarily, like, negating the movie entirely, but they do also go back and, like, correct some things that happened. But it's pretty much a different thing. And I feel like this is, it's pretty much not, like, anything like The Shining. Yeah. Aside from the fact mm -hmm. that it's him. But it feels, that felt more like they were fixing it and this felt more like fan service yeah up uh, i think it was only at the end part Mm -hmm. which i mean we're we're jumping around spoilers but obviously they go back because it's in the fucking trailer that they go back to the hotel um but i i think up to that point though it 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 and like the and like the novel doctor sleep it it takes the concept of the shining, the powers, yeah, and um, it. does its own thing. It's it's not, you know, it's not like the whole thing's trying to be like the shining, the movie at all. It's sort yeah. of its own identity in a way. And um, getting into that now, I think there are some really cool concepts that were that came out of that. Totally. Some real cool cinematography with the the powers and all that, like. Mm-hmm. It was cool. Like, 
there's a there's a really cool sequence in the sky and i don't want to ruin too much oh yeah but like executed that, very well oh my god it was so cool um i also dug the score like that was very much pulled from the shining the film score mm. but i thought it was effective um yeah i honestly don't remember it too much i'm like trying to think it had a, it had a lot of the thumping from it had yeah. that thumping theme mm-hmm. from the uh the shining film um i don't know there's some cool stuff in there and i love rebecca ferguson you mcgregor She's is great. awesome uh i do think that uh, the person who played um fuck some I guess it, some of the like recasting things worked for me and some didn't. You know what I mean? Uh, like Shelley Duvall's character from The Shining. Yeah. The one that they recast for her, clearly a better actress and like more attractive version of her. <laughs> Wait, uh, better think... than you don't like Shelley Duvall in The Shining? No, I don't. I don't think she's good in it at all. Fair enough. Yeah, that's my. I mean, again, one of my favorite movies ever. I like the movie. It's fine and all that, but I don't think that she's like that great of an actress. Um, mm. And that I was, feel like it, she was cast very well, though the replacement for this. Yeah, no, totally. No, I I feel like the replacement was cast very well. Um, I just thought it was like interesting to see her kind of take tra- take her mannerisms and sort of do something different with them. I don't yeah. know. Um, I don't know how I felt though about who they got to play jack nicholson yeah i hear that a lot um i thought it was fine um because it's sort of like this is sort of like a response to you know when we see like uh like some of these these movies now that just like sort of cg their face like the old actress face onto them oh yeah we say we say oh just recast them and so they did this and i respect that decision Sometimes oh, yeah. it's not always effective, you know? Yeah, I mean, I respect the decision, too. I just didn't like the guy's performance. Like, I, I thought yeah. it was very successful in the case of Shelley Duvall's character. But yeah, I, it just, I thought like, that was good. Like, I would much rather the guy that's in the movie be in the movie as opposed to a CG Jack Nicholson. It's just I didn't, I didn't buy his performance, I guess. Fair enough. I've heard that a lot. <clears throat> Do you know who that who actually played him? No. It's uh, Elliot from E.T. Oh, shit. That's great. Yeah. <clears throat> well, fuck yeah. Elliot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. um, he was also, he's also in Mike Flanagan's... Um, I, I talked about this on the show, but The Haunting of Hill House. Oh, yeah. I've heard really good things about that. Great didn't show. He, didn't he direct another movie, too? Gerald's just- Game? It's another Stephen King remake. But, like, didn't he do, like, a, the Ouija movie or something? He did Hush, Oculus. Maybe Oculus is what I'm thinking of. Um, yeah, those are, like, the big ones. Yeah, I think I'm thinking of Oculus. Because I, I knew I'd seen one of his movies randomly. Yeah. I think that was it. Yeah, definitely. He did both Ouija movies. Mm-hmm. Oh, he did, or he do did the Ouija the se- movie. The second Ouija, sorry. Okay, yeah. Second yeah. Ouija did first Oculus. A Gerald's game was good. Yeah, I never that was, saw that one. That was good. It's on Netflix. Um, Honey and Phil House, I really liked that show a lot. Yeah, I need really to watch spooky. that. Really spooky. It was good. Um, but yeah, um, overall, I thought that it was decent. I thought it was decent. It could have been a lot worse, you know. Um, and Especially I thought, for how long it is. Like, I... yeah. I honestly was not expecting to like it very much, personally. But yeah, it's fairly long. Yeah, it's two and a half hours, um, but it feels good. I also it, I found it I find it very hard to like form a solid opinion about a film over a a, a book that I've read. <laughs> yeah, know? totally. Because I, I I finished the the novel that day and that like that night I watched the movie. Oh, well. So, yeah, so it was sort of, it's hard for me to put 
like a form an opinion about something like that because I don't know if I because I'm so familiar with the property before I even go into it. Yeah, I can't have like a clear head on mm-hmm. it. I don't know. It's weird. I need to like almost see those kind of movies twice. But um, yeah, overall I liked it. Um, but we can get into spoilers, a little short spoiler segment if you'd like. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I I got. I got some questions. I don't know what part they should go in if the answer is spoiler. Should I just wait? I say let's just wait. Okay. I think it's a, it's a stupid question, but that's fine. All right. We'll um go to spoilers now for Doctor Sleep. Right now. These empty devils, they'll eat what hands. And they noticed that little girl. coming where are we going there's a place you sure you want to do this i'm ready yes you run dear and then i will find you and you will scream for years All right, I got a slight beef. What's with the fucking hat? That's in the book. But you just like not like the hat? Well, I see the I see the trailer, and I'm like, this hat is wildly distracting. What's with this hat? (laughs) It looks really weird. Like, why is she wearing this? And right. then the movie starts, first scene of the movie about the hat. And I was like, oh, okay, wow, they're really just nailing this hat. Thank you, because now I won't be distracted the whole movie by this hat. You're really jumping to it. <laughs> and then right. they answer no questions about the hat. They bring up the hat, and she just says it's magic, and that's it. Don't bring my attention to the hat. It just felt like a <laughs> an excuse for her to wear this stupid hat the whole movie, and I found it very distracting. Well, her name is Rose the Hat. Yeah, so it's, but it's just like she. That, no, I get she it. She can have any hat. What? What about one that doesn't look weird that c- calls attention to you when you're trying to blend in? There are these weird like nomads that are like trying yeah. to like exist on the fringe and like why would you wear something that's like really like makes you stand out? I don't know. It didn't make sense to me. I guess the whole idea is like sort of she's lived for so long, so where it's mm-hmm. like they have old styles. You know, yeah. like they, they're not in fashion because, you know, they're from a different time. But they were, though. It's like only the hat left. <laughs> she was wearing like, she was wearing like slightly like period looking garb, but that was like very like stylishly designed. Like clearly yeah. not like clothes that existed then. And then the, I my roommate, John, my friend who I saw it with, he had read the book and um oh okay he i was like what's with the hat <laughs> when we left the movie and he was like yeah she's old or whatever and i get that but like just just like fucking you're talking about the hat just bring it up tell me about right. it i don't know slight bone to pick it was distracting thought it looked goofy okay um ian mcgregor was great yeah he was good he was I thought the first, the first scene with him, I was like, I don't know if I'm buying this, but eventually mm. I think, I think he, he earned it. You know, he was good in it. Just him like yeah. being like a total piece of shit when he's also like a huge hunk and like has like a, I know. a nice trimmed beard with like really nice hair. I was like, don't yeah. know if I'm buying this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. He's perfectly groomed. It yeah. looks like his like sweater was like the kind of ripped that where they like rub it on a brick at the store for like 20 extra right. dollars. You know what right, I mean? Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I get that. Um, Cause in the book, he's like, he's like a piece of shit. Like yeah. he, like he, he's a complete alcoholic. He's a mm-hmm. dirty fuck, you know, like he, yeah uh he's broke he he's he's a fucking loser mm-hmm. um i don't fully buy that as human mcgregor but when the character sobers up like he does in the book and also in the movie 
I buy that a little bit more. He oh, plays yeah, that absolutely. character well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sobered up Dan Torrance. <laughs> yeah. And I liked, um, I thought the scene that, like, bookended the scene where you first see him with the him having the vision of the woman and the baby was very effective. Nice. When they're like, they haven't even found us yet, or whatever, the dead right. bodies. It was like, oof. Like, that That was, like, very well done. What did you think about the whole thing with, like, the baseball boy? That was oh, a little brutal. The, yeah, the boy. Yeah, I think that was also... There was the baby thing, and then that, where... What I was talking about earlier, where it's kind of like, well, anything. I guess anything can happen. They just brutally murder a kid in front of you with this movie. So, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. They, they don't really. That's definitely like the boldest thing that happens. So it never really yeah. like hits that peak again. But I think that's an interesting, um, at least for like the viewing experience, it, it makes it good and because you can't anticipate. Because it's like, well, didn't think that this like widely released movie would murder a boy. It like a group murder <laughs> where they yeah a bunch of adults just like stab a boy <laughs> you know what they I mean? feed they feed off of him yeah yeah kind of dark crystally they're kind of skexies you know yeah totally draining totally. the essence oh man what a good show <laughs> yeah man um uh, yeah um there's definitely some things that obviously were different than the book yeah. too like things were fast forwarded i think i was a little frustrated as someone who read the book was um the part where they like decide to go to the hotel at uh, that point like in the book for one that's like a way longer journey kind of thing yeah I'd and imagine. and um the whole kidnapping like the guy who kidnapped the girl was like a whole long thing too mm-hmm. um so they kind of like skipped all that and sort of just like went boom we're going to the hotel done and um for one the girl actually stayed behind at her parents house and went with him mentally in his head and dan torrance was so out of energy from like kind of holding her and like on the journey Uh that um the old guy in the very beginning is uh he's he drives him to the place where they meet in this camp which Uh is out in the book, it takes place outside of the hotel where the hotel it used to exist because it yeah, burned yeah. down. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I don't know. The little differences like that were interesting. Um, but, like, uh, I guess getting into into the stuff with the hotel, it was cool seeing that stuff, like, kind of coming back to the hotel and see it. But I feel like, again, like, it wasn't – I feel like it had already recently been done. Yeah. Because the Steven Spielberg movie. Yeah. Honestly, though, fuck that. Yeah, I, I know. Was, it kind I of was fucked not it up. Into that. I was not into that part of that. Oh, like, like at Ready all? Ready Player One. Yeah. Well, oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Um, no, I know. Yeah, and I, I get that, like, these are the ghosts that inhabited the place, so they're stuck in these weird loops, and they're going to do the thing that they did in the old movie. But mm-hmm. it, it's like i was saying before it's just like these are the same beats from the old movie so like i'm just watching a less good shining you know what i mean yeah and it's like even the way that they're walking up the steps with the axe and it's like mimicking what happened before and like yeah okay thematically he's a son he's back in the scenario i thought it was interesting like there's definitely like a dynamic there but like i i just think it comes back to maybe not being a great idea for this story to service that because it just ends up that I'm just watching a less good shining. You know what I mean? Right. Because every, think about it, everything in the hotel was written for the movie mm-hmm. because that's not in the book. That's not. Yeah. So, there's a lot like, and that's a large I, chunk. The movie's long too. Like I didn't think it was boring, but I was like, I was, I was about to be like, how much longer is it? And I was like, it's long. Even, they haven't even fucking talked about the hotel yet. I was like, right. shit, there's a lot more left. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, totally. There was a point where, like, it could have ended. It could have been, like, wrapping up, like, or, like, building, you know what I mean? And it was just like, oh, yeah. no, like, there's a lot, a lot more of this left. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, anyway. Um, there's some cool stuff in there. Not quite as effective. I do, like, I do, to kind of wrap things up, I do think... Um, 
I'm glad this tried to be an exact copy of The Shining or anything like that. Oh, like it, yeah, totally. It kind of has its own identity, but also, at the end, it's complete fan service for that. And mm-hmm. um, as a fan of, of that property, I enjoyed it and was dissatisfied with it at the same yeah, time. Yeah. So, um, overall, I think I'd give it a three and a half. I'd probably give it a three. Okay. Yeah, it's like I I thought it was like an enjoyable movie to go see. Wasn't like fuck that when I left. Like oh, I had to go. You know, like I I'm glad I saw it in the theater. It was fun. I thought yeah, I enjoyed it. Parts were inspired, like the part where she flies across and she's in the sky. And so it's like cool, all centered. It's like really cool and like easily one fixing, of the best parts of the movie. Fixing the angle and you're fault tracking her and the world spins and it's like definitely really cool. Um, yeah. But once again, like I was saying with Watchmen earlier, the best parts of this movie were this movie's identity. And I think my least favorite parts were the parts that were, like, in service to the previous thing. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny thing about the marketing, too, because it started out kind of uh, just being about this whole new identity. Mm-hmm. And near the end of the marketing was sort of, like, all about The Shining. Because it's yeah. like they're trying to cash in on that. It's like, man, I kind of just wish it was its own thing, you yeah. know? Because it's a cool idea. Like I don't, like I don't necessarily think it's like bad that it's the kid from The Shining, but he could have written this sequel in the same universe and just have it have absolutely nothing to do with any of the characters from that, and it's just about the concept of The Shining. Right. You know what I mean? And like that's it, mostly what the book is. Yeah. It dives so, into more of like what that is. Mm-hmm. It also Man. pays it, even in the in, even in the book. It does have pay or callbacks to the Shining book. Oh yeah, like I'm some sure. of, some of the spirits and ghosts come back and stuff, but whatever. It's not literally in the hotel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess one one other thought I had is I the really simple thing is I like the the visual effect of them like starving from not having the essence or whatever. Yeah, the steam. Yeah, the steam. Yeah, I'm thinking Dark Crystal essence. Yeah, but. Uh, but yeah, like when they were withdrawing, like when the giant from Twin Peaks is dying, it was like yeah. the, the effect. Lo- the effect looks really good. Like it was an interesting effect. They're like weirdly translucent, and like they're yeah, it's like fading in between, and it's like phasing and stuff. It was cool. Yeah, that that actually follows the book. It, mm-hmm. They kind of do that in the book, where they kind of like phase in and out, sort of. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought that was effective too. Yeah, yeah it looks looks really cool. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, man. So uh, yeah, overall, we there's some there's a lot of good and there's there's some not so great things, yeah. but uh, overall we enjoyed that. it. Yeah, it was, yeah, totally it was worth like watching. A fine movie, especially if you especially if you like The Shining, check it out. Yeah, yeah. and I I like Mike Flanagan his stuff too. So mm-hmm. he's a, he's a good horror director that's that's yeah. that's in the scene right now. So. Okay, one other thing before we keep going that I just remembered. Yeah. So. He, he gets off the bus in this random town. He's a drunk. He's like, fuck. Right. This guy's like, all right, crash in this room. It's a weekly rent. Yeah. And crash here. And he still lives there eight years later. He didn't get his own place. I- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a, little, a little weird. A little weird. It's a great room. <laughs> it's a killer room. But you got to deal with paying rent every week? Come on. Yeah, I know. That's a really good point. <laughs> That's a really to get good your point. own fucking place, man. Jeez. I know. Yeah. And that whole thing of him, the eight years passed like nothing. You know, yeah, like totally. again in the book, obviously you feel that more. Well, he did it's, shave his beard. He shaved the beard. For time once, passed. I want time to pass, <laughs> and nothing happens. They still have the beard. I still have it. Especially, Fuck you. It's not trimmed. It's even slightly bigger, marginally bigger, different style. Especially Ian McGregor. Got a great yeah. beard. Great beard. Keep Let it thing. ride, bud. <laughs> of course, well, I guess we'll see that again with the Obi-Wan show coming out. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Jesus. Disney Plus, buddy. When how how far down the pipeline's that? Is that like almost done or like not even started? I think they've started shooting. Okay. That's gonna be yeah. weird. 
Mandalorian is like, okay, it's a different thing, whatever. But like, it, Obi-Wan show is going to be weird. Not necessarily bad, but just like. I hope weird. it's just him. I, I hope it's just him on tattooing, just like being a fucking hermit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Great. Like. <laughs> Honestly, if it was him, like, organizing weird, like, I don't know, taking books. care of, like, books or, like, weird, like, little alien creatures and just, like, feeding them, I would, it's the best show like, of all time. Cleaning, I, like, moisture evapor- evaporators. Like, yeah. I want like, low stakes Star Wars. I want, like, the. <laughs> I think I've told him you about feeding, this. Him feeding creatures. Yeah. Is what you said. Just, like, working I'm at just, a farm. Yeah. <laughs> him like, feeding I, creatures. Best show I, ever. I told you about my idea for the Star Wars spinoff movie, right? The Rodian, Rodian Child. Me and Nevi would talk about it back in the oh, day. Oh, I think he did tell me. Yeah, remind me though. Remind it's me. It's just a Rodian who who's on Coruscant that plays saxophone, yeah. and he's yeah. just like trying to get by, and he just like plays sax, <laughs> and he yeah. has a little, little Rodian baby, and they like can't afford their rent because like Coruscant's yeah. gentrifying to humans, and he's just like yeah. pushing all the aliens out. But, like, nothing happens, and then it's just really depressing, and it ends. That would be great. I'd watch that. Hell and yeah, I'd watch the shit out of that. the whole thing is subtitled, and everyone talks like, but if you want mama. Yeah, the, no one want speaks want English. Like, <laughs> 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 yes, I want that. Yeah, I'd watch the shit out of that. Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, well, anyway, Wes, before we continue. Yeah just want to remind everyone that uh for the listeners of this podcast audible is offering a free audiobook downloaded with a free 30-day free trial to give you the opportunity to check it out so download Shit. your free audiobook by going to audibletrial.com slash l-t-u-r-a-m that's audibletrial.com slash l-t-u-r-a-m for your free audiobook all right then well we're gonna get into our non-spoilers for ryan johnson's Knives out, starting right now. Knivzoot. No. If I could pause, why are we doing all this? Let's back it up. The family has desperate motives. And when good people get desperate, the knives come out. You know something. Spill it. I suspect foul play. All right, so that was from the trailer of Knives Out. A detective investigates the death of a patriarch of an eccentric, combative family. Directed and written by Ryan Johnson, starring a shit ton of people. Yeah, honestly, at literally everyone except for maybe two people in this movie are of, like, significant note. Seriously. I mean, Daniel Craig, Chris Evans, Anna de Armas, Jamie Lee Curtis, Michael Shannon, Don Johnson, Tony Collette, uh, Lakeith Stanfield, man, Christopher Plummer, Catherine Langford, dude. Edie Frank Patterson. Frank Oz. Yep. Right? Dude. Yeah, Edie Patterson. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Such a good cast. Yeah, it's a banger um, cast. So we uh, get, like we talked about earlier, we got early access screening. This comes out. If you're listening to this, we'll be uh, probably right on your holiday. Thanksgiving is when it comes out. There was one showing in, I think, most cities. Yeah, the there were two before. in Chicago. There was one Friday and Saturday. Okay. I think there might have been two here as well, but... Either way, Saturday night was the main thing. Early access screening for anyone who bought tickets. And so we both decided to go run and get that. And we saw it. And what did you think, Zach? I liked it. I thought it was good. I thought it was very entertaining. Um, I liked the style. I liked all the performances. I would say my main complaint, and I always hate being the guy, but I just it was maybe a little predictable. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't get that predictable aspect to it. I thought um, there's a lot of twists and turns. Mm. Um, I didn't know where where to go. I was at the edge of my seat near the end, just sort of. Oh, oh, oh. I, I thought it was very entertaining, very Absolutely. funny. Mm. Uh, a fun watch, just fun. 
Yeah, I, I think overall that's what's best about it. It's just a fun movie, and it goes by, fun. goes by like that so fast. Great performances, looks good, good score. Just like fun I think to this watch. might might be his one of his better films. Might be his yeah. second best film. What would you say is his best? Probably Brick. Yeah, I haven't seen Brick in a long time. I haven't either, but I think Brick's really good, and this is. I have to watch Brick again to kind of compare them, but I would say this is better than Looper. Yeah, I liked it more than Looper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Last Jedi is a whole other identity, so it's yeah. Like, but, it's it's yeah. a stronger movie than Last Jedi on its own. I agree. Um, yeah, I was just very surprised by it. I. I thought, oh, yeah, it'd be fun, but I didn't expect it to be this entertaining. I felt like the writing was very sharp. Um, everything that was sort of presented to you, every little detail, every little, like, comment things, what came back. Everything came yeah. back. And, like, at the very end, I was, like, even uh, Emily and I were sort of like, what about the th what about the thing? And and then, like, almost immediately, they, like, answered that. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, I thought it was just very tightly written, nicely performed, very fun, very entertaining. Great movie. Yeah. I really liked it. Yeah. I, uh, very fun. Yeah. I don't know really what else to say. Um, I think it was structurally different than I thought it was going to be. I, I think it, they kind of made it seem like it was more of like, a clue thing in the sense that like everyone was there. Like I thought everyone was going to be trapped in the house. I did too. And it's I just like too. everyone like accusing each other. You know what I mean? Which it's not it's at sort all. of right. It's the time after. Yeah. Which I guess makes more realistic sense. And also is trying to, it's trying to be different. Yeah, for sure. It just, I, I was surprised. I don't think it's a negative. I was just surprised by the structure. There's a lot of, like, narration and flashbacks and, like, unreliable narration and, like, things changing and your perspective of different events happening. And, like... I thought that was cool, too, mm. having the different perspectives of the same kind of story. Yeah, totally. It was cool. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I thought it had a lot of twists and turns where I didn't ex I didn't know where it was going to go. Like, and, and when a part of – or piece of the story was revealed, I was like, oh, shit. You know, like, I mm. was – I was all in on it, and um, I guess one character kind of made sense, like, oh, of course. But, like, other than that, I enjoyed the ride. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I would say even though parts of it I kind of anticipated, I still enjoyed the ride regardless. Like, I thought it was really enjoyable and fun to watch. Um, yeah, I think... Everything came back for sure, but sometimes to the point where I was like, well, that's just something that's going to come back. And and then there was no other purpose aside from having it come back. You know what I mean? I can't really I think. So. Spears uh, is getting to me. I can't really think of the, it like just had an example of that, but I can't remember. Oh, so. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it too. So it's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anything else we should talk about before we get into spoilers? Um, I think Daniel Craig was fun, but I didn't love him. But I thought he was fun. Yeah, I thought he was. I thought he was fine. Like I didn't. Yeah, I didn't necessarily buy his character in the sense of like his performance. But yeah. it was also just like a goofy, fun performance, and it was like okay, yeah, you know what I mean. Like I, I think he was much more successful in Logan Lucky, being yeah. goofy. You know what I mean? Agreed. Agreed. He's 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 better in that film with that character. I would say. Um, I was surprised that Anna de Armas had such a major role. Yes, was not expecting. And I thought that. she was re I thought she was really good. Yeah, she was great. I thought she was. And I thought she was really good. I also it was a thing where like I I saw her in the trailer or whatever, and I was like, okay, whatever. But yeah, yeah. Once they focused on her a little bit, like it shows her in the beginning, like aside from all the other stuff, I was like, okay, so she's like a major player in this movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which yeah, yeah. I wasn't expecting previously, like going in, but like that's what I'm saying. I feel like yeah. they they set it up, like you know, at a certain point early on that it's like you're yeah pretty much following her, which 
I also totally. wasn't anticipating, like even structurally, even if she was the protagonist, for it to be primarily just based her perspective. On, yeah, just based on the cast and like the trailers, I just didn't think that she would be sort of the main protagonist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I thought she was fantastic. I um, think I could have used for more, um, more of everyone else. Yeah. Like that's a, that's a fair criticism. I could have used, um, I could have used a little more Don Johnson. Definitely could have used more Michael Shannon. I could always use more Michael Shannon. You know what I mean? More Michael Shannon. The kid. I feel like we could have used a little bit more of him. Yeah, they didn't really get it. And I, uh, this might be this might be spoiler town, but I just felt like for me. I was pointed in the direction of what was going to happen based on the time they were spending with certain people. So it's like for certain characters, you see past like the group setting and for a lot of them, you don't. So then it's like, well, why would it be any of them? They're all kind of underdeveloped to an extent. And like, they have a motive but we don't know them enough to like decipher like would they be like capable you know what i mean yeah. so so to me it wasn't it was like less of a question of like who did it or versus like how it happened you know what i mean yeah we we'll let's talk about more about that in spoilers yeah, yeah. um we're going to get into spoilers for knives out starting now no yeah <laughs> Did you just Google that? I did just Google that. You gotta do this more often. I sort of thought it was very interesting and different for this movie to show us the death, like... Really early. Felt like it was very early, yeah. It felt like it was almost before the halfway point definitely was i would say it's like yeah, a third okay. into the movie because yeah. they have, she's not even really a character at that point no because they haven't interviewed her because that's like the first time she gets interviewed right yeah and that was crazy how that played out so it's like okay yeah. so we saw so it's so we saw the death okay mm-hmm. it's like what else is there to show and i felt like it was i liked that it did that i liked that it We've seen too. so many whodunits before and mm. um, who needs another whodunit or whatever. But this was a unique take on like a classic idea. And I enjoyed that. I did too. I will say though that for me, like, I don't know what else to do. So I, I have no solution to this. But like yeah. by subverting it and revealing that so early, it was like I knew that that couldn't be it. You know what I mean? It's like of clear, course. clearly, like this isn't it. Well, you clearly, know, there's so, more. Obviously, there's more to it. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, but I like, mean, yeah, even, anyone knows that. Even well, yeah. even like the switching of the bottles. I was like, it. Did he actually die from that? Like, is it gonna be like they switched the medicine? Like, I had that thought. Like, you know what I mean? I was like, oh, even really? even when they were showing it, I was like constantly questioning like what, which I guess is good because I'm yeah, yeah. I'm engaged enough to question that. But it just kind of felt like I knew that that could not be the entirety or, like, what happened. Of course. And then everyone else is, like, so marginally seen aside from this, like, very mysterious Chris Evans that it's like, well, Chris Evans did it. You know what I mean? I I kind of – I feel like – Pretty early on, and, I was like, "Yeah, I mean, he is it going to be that he did it? Because it definitely just seems like he he's behind it, you know." Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. I he he definitely has uh, from the very beginning. He's painted as like this asshole guy, and yeah, uh, he's not much in it in the very beginning until like I'd say like mm-hmm. post halfway through, he he becomes kind of a more major player. Um, but yeah, I then and then at that one point he sort of was just like being nice to her, and I'm like, he was an asshole. Like I don't, I'm not buying that he's just like being a nice guy without some kind of yeah. um, trying to get something out of it. Mm-hmm. I could have used more of um, of uh, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis too. Yeah, 
you know? Totally. More more Jamie. She's she's strong in the beginning and then we don't really see her after that. Yeah. It just seems like the the questioning of like what's going to happen, so much of the time was spent on her like the main character's trajectory and then eventually Chris Evans that it was like clearly there's something going on here because it'd be really weird if all of a sudden Jamie Lee Curtis just was like I fucking did it. It's like wait, what? You know what I mean? Or like Michael Shannon, like it didn't Yeah. It didn't seem feasible that anyone could have done it aside from like something between them happening. Or maybe nothing happened, but there's going to be some sort of reveal that like it it wasn't what we thought. So I was maybe, I didn't want him to, like, pull it out again, but I was just maybe looking for, like, something, just, like, a little some little tweak of something different hmm. with that resolution. All right. I get that. Yeah. I sort of was, I guess for me, like, I was doubting everything so much that I did even, like, I was always sort of, like, on my toes, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. So the fact that I was always doubting things, I was sort of always looking for the next twist. And because it kept mm. twisting things on me, I'm like, oh, oh, oh. You know, I don't really, yeah, yeah. I couldn't trust what was being shown me, uh, shown to me. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say other than I I had fun. I had a lot yeah. of fun. I was entertained. It's great. Um, I think it's a highlight for this year. I yeah, opinion. I thought it's it was like, funny. Like a lot of the, some of the jokes fell a little flat, but a lot of them were really yeah. good. And um, like the car chase is funny. Yeah, like them running <laughs> yeah. away, and then he's like, "That was so stupid." Like what he's like, "That doing? was the worst car chase <laughs> yeah. I've ever seen." Yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> I like that. That was fun, and like the donut thing was, was fun. I thought it was cool that it was like placed modern times. Like it wants you to know yeah. that it's in modern times. Yeah, and and they did a good job. So it has at, that old. Has that old school feel too. Yeah. Even like they make fun of the house, like being like a clue board. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, it did a good job at um, incorporating that, but not having it be a hindrance. Because I feel like a yeah. lot of writing is like, oh, well, now everyone has smartphones. So, like, how do we write around that? And it never totally. felt like there was like excuses or like weird expository stuff based on that. But, um, but it, it it actually just made it an avenue to like talk about like modern times in the movie, um, yeah, which was good. But also like I could have done with maybe more or less of like I feel like they they tap mm. on it enough that I don't know like what the story is getting at aside from just like tapping on it. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, yeah. Like with with the the kid who's like the all right kid or whatever. And yeah, then the yeah. other girl Just who's fun. like always like ragging on him. It's like I I could have done with like that relationship being a little more fleshed out because I liked it, and it's like yeah. none of none of the stuff is bad because it's just I want more of it because it would have just fleshed it out a little more. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm saying about the kid too. Could have used a little bit more of him to sort of flesh him out. Yeah, he he really just stood there with the cell phone in his face. Yeah, like, totally. He didn't really do much else. Mm-hmm. And that's like a that's the kid from it. So he's like yeah. He's the realness, but like, I don't know. He had, he didn't have much to do. Unfortunately. I think also for me, the, I, I guess one of the payoff things is like the prop knife. Like it's a good gag. Oh my God. That was so good. It's good. But like, I I feel like it was so, no, I, I liked it. I didn't dislike it. But I think that's an example of, like, there's just the throwaway line about, like, the prop knife. It's like, you can never know what's going to be a prop knife and what's not. And then I was like, okay, so at some point there's going to be a knife and it's going to be a prop knife. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so it's just kind of like, like why, why, el- why even throw that in there? Why else would this be in the movie unless it's coming back later? You know what I mean? And, like, there's a few specific things. Like, one that I'm kind of torn on because it's kind of stupid but also very funny is Hugh. Like, Hugh did this. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, like, there's the line about how, like, no one calls it, his name's Ransom and no one calls him you because blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, yeah, I get that that's in to fulfill this weird thing. So you think that she said you did this. But then just the difference of you and you is funny. Yeah, So it's yeah. like, I get it. It's it's funny. You know what I mean? But it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's like very, like, buttoned. You know what I mean? It's like, but not necessarily a bad thing, but I just got that vibe from it. It was very, like, um... 
written in not a bad way. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I don't know. It also had, like, a good Ryan Johnson vibe to it. Like, I feel like it totally... If if you follow him on Twitter, which I don't, mm. I don't you don't have a Twitter, but I don't, don't um, know. he he definitely has like a personality on social media, mm. and um, it this fit that personality completely. Yeah. So in a way, that's a plus and minus, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I hope people watch this movie and are super entertained. And like, if if they hated Last Jedi, if they hate Ryan Johnson for Last Jedi, I hope that they're like, oh, okay, this guy can like make things that are good so i still don't get it like it's so stupid. i don't either it's, it's fucking good chill out yeah also it's star wars like relax yeah <laughs> y'all need to chill there are far worse movies than last jedi oh yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah anyway um we will have more discussions on star wars with the new one when that comes yeah, out man. which i'm excited for um but yeah what do you rate this movie? Um, I give it like a four. Yeah, I give it a solid four. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. I want to see it again. I it was one of the better times I think I'd had in the theater, just like in terms of yeah, just just going to the theater and having a good time. You know, uh, yeah, I think I think recently that's gotten major points, like bonus points for me. It's like yeah. if a movie. Cause like the movies that are supposed to be fun aren't fun. Like I know I I I'm not necessarily ragging on them, but like Avengers Endgame is not fun. You know what I mean? Like like these like action. Oh, movies, well, I disagree with that. Well, I, I don't know. Like I mean, but they're like so dense and like serious. Like they're not like there's a lot to them. Yeah, they're, they're not, not like, light. Yeah, you're not, they're, you're not, they're fun if you're, you're invested. Not it's not like you could just walk in and have fun watching a movie. You could go home and watch 20 feature films and then walk in and have fun. But you know what right. I mean? Like, I know what you're saying. There's not just like, there. there's an inherent just like watchability to it that I think few things have now. And it's just, yeah. It, and it's made to be entertaining, but that's not an excuse. Because there's certain things that are like, it's entertainment, who cares? But it's like, yeah, well, entertainment can also be good and not shitty. And right. sti- you know what I mean? Like, it's, um, and it's it's something original, you know? It's yeah. fucking original. Like, it is a rare thing. It's kind of sad. It's like, oh, this is a movie that I don't have to have any prior knowledge of anything about. Other yeah. than, like, just, like, real life. And mm-hmm. I can go and watch this movie and be entertained. It's great. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's good... There's an inherent quality to films like that nowadays. Like, that is so much more rare than before yeah it's like oh going to go see a movie that's not tied to an ip or a a gigantic corporation or also just like really dark and fucked up like right or that like joker's huge and it's just like a really fucking dark ass movie and i have nothing against dark dark and it's tied to an ip (laughs) yeah and it's like i have nothing against dark movies i like them but i think that the just the watchability factor and like entertainment factor being like major and like also, the priority we, scale. We like we like live in fucking dark times right now. Yeah. You know, and sometimes I just want a movie to fucking forget about reality for a little mm-hmm. bit because you know, shit's fucked up in the world right now and it's just like it's nice to be able to just go and escape. And that's why I like movies. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and not having to be reminded all the time. Although it says callbacks to modern day, like alt right shit, but mm. I can laugh at it and have a good time. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I don't know. Again, that kind of feeds into all of that. But, well, I think that kind of wraps it up. Yeah, I'm pretty toast. I'm, I'm a toasty boy. Yeah. This was a long one. We had a lot to talk about, yeah. but it was a good one. It was a good one. For sure. As always, you can find other episodes of this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and YouTube. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and if you enjoy the show, leave us a little review, because every uh, review brings us more listeners. Send us an email at listenersrainaboutmovies at gmail.com. Thank you to our Patreon producer, Sean Pierce, and our other Patreon supporters. You too can be a producer and or supporter of this podcast by visiting our Patreon page and becoming a monthly patron for as little as a dollar 
That's a lot of fucking P words. Visit <laughs> www.patreon.com slash L-T-U-R-A-M podcast. That's it for this episode. Shit's Seth. done! <laughs> Shit's done in the can. Have a good one, man. You too, man. Thank you.